Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we finished the login functionality, which is the login service required to be used in our login component. Now we have completed this code here, so let's go ahead and use this service inside our login component. So open your login.component.ts file. Now let's also open our login component.html file because we would need to get the values from our form and then use those values inside our login.component.ts files. Since we want to get these values and use them inside our ts file, we need to create some variables that will hold that values for us like the username and password that was entered first of all we will create a form group object that will hold the values of the form and all the contents inside the form so let's do that i will create a variable and i will call it insert form and this variable will be of type form group now the form group is available inside angular forms so let's go ahead and add the import statement to import the form group model so i've added the import statement to import form group from angular forms so now i should not see any errors now we need two variables that will hold the value of the username and the password field so the user will enter his username and password and these values need to be stored inside a variable so let's go ahead and create those two variables since we are storing values of our form controls which is an input tag we would need to create two variables called username and password and we are going to use the form control model class here now once again we have to import form control from angular forms so all you have to do is import it and you should not see any errors now you may be wondering what's the difference between form control and form group so a form group basically is the form element itself and the content inside the form the entire content Whereas the form control is just a single control, which is your input, which is holding some value. So, if you are asked what is the difference between these two, you can clearly explain it. Now, we have created these two variables. Now, the next thing that we need to do is let's create another variable and we will call this as return url which will be of type string why do we need this return url now the return url is needed because we are going to implement authorization and authentication in our application so let's say my user wants to access products now this is the products url to access all the products since we are implementing authorization on products controller, which means that if somebody who's not authenticated tries to access the products component, will be redirected to the login page or should be redirected to our login page. In that event, what is going to happen is we need to save the last URL or the return URL. So our user was trying to access the products URL then he was redirected to the login URL now the user enters his username and password after that we have to redirect him back to the URL that he initially wanted to visit therefore we are going to create a variable called as return URL which will hold the value of the URL that referred the user to the login page hope this is also clear now the next thing that we want to 
create is a variable that will hold the error message that we can display this will also be of type string so let's create this so finally we require a value that will is going to hold for us if the user's login is valid or invalid and it would be of type boolean so it's going to be true or false if the user enters his username and password and it's invalid so when he clicks the submit button and the result the response that we receive from a service says that the user details are invalid so this variable will hold it as true invalid login is equal to true so that's it for the required variables that we need now the next thing that we want to do is initialize our variable inside our ng on it method and to initialize our variable we would need few objects that we need to instantiate in our constructor so the service account service we have already created an account service um, we can leave it as it is let's go ahead and create a few more objects instantiate few more objects here so another object that we would need here would be a object that will help us to route the user to the return URL so we want to send the user back to the URL that he was initially trying to access but was not authenticated therefore he was redirected to the login page so to redirect him back after login to the same page we need to have a variable of type router so let's create that private and call this as router or UTR call this module which is router now let's also go ahead and add the reference to our router module in the import statement in our class so I have added the import statement now the next thing that we want to do is now this uh, object here is going to route the user back to the URL that he wanted to initially visit but what object are we going to use in order to capture that return URL so to capture that URL the return URL we are going to create a object here call it route and it is going to be of type activated route now activated route once again is available under angular router so all you have to do is comma and add it here and this object here will help us to get the url that referred the user to the login page next thing that we want to add is our form builder object that is going to help us to build our form from the values in our form control so let's go ahead and create the form builder object so we have created the form builder object and the form builder object is available under angular forms so let's add form builder reference and now the form builder will help us to add the username and password controls inside a form group so that's the reason why we need this and we will see this when we use or initialize them inside our ng on it method and finally we need our service which we already created so that should be it for now let's go ahead and initialize our objects inside the ng on it method so inside the ng on it method the first thing that we want to do is initialize our form controls so let's go ahead and do that so first we will initialize our username so username and is equal to new form control Now inside this form control, we can 
inside the constructor of our form control we can initialize some values for our form so let's go ahead and do that so if you just hit a comma you will see what values you can enter so the first value that you would need to enter is the form state so for now we will leave the form state as an empty string the next value that we need to enter is the validation options for our form so if you remember that in the demo video tutorial I have added some validations that the username is needed the password is needed in order to submit the form and also we have made it very clear that unless the information is entered inside the form controls the user cannot click the submit button it will be kind of grayed out it will not be active it will only be active if these two controls are filled out now what we want to do is provide that validation option so let's go ahead and create a array for that and inside the array we can add multiple validation options so the validation options that we want to add is inside the validators object or validators module so let's go ahead and first import it inside our reference so validators it's available under the angular forms let's call validators so it will help us to validate our form controls and so what kind of validation do we need to add so the username is required so the first validation would be validators dot required so the username field is required so without the user entering the field he cannot submit the form now let's go ahead and initialize our second variable which is the password form control so password is equal to new form control and once again the for the form state i'm going to leave it as an empty string and for the validation options i'm going to use the same option which is validators dot required and as i told you it's an array of uh, your validation options you can just comma add a comma and then you can add another option like validators dot and it should give you so many options that you can use like minimum length maximum length max the pattern if you have any regex pattern or it's required through there are so many options here that you can use if it's an email and so on but i just need this one validation option here which is validators dot required so i'm just going to use that in my array so that should be it for our two form controls now what we want to do is go ahead and create the initialization for our return url so as soon as this login page loads we capture the referrers url in the using the root object or root variable so let's do that so our return url is equal to our root object dot which helps us to get the refers url using the snapshot property and then calling the query param property inside the query param you need to use the query that is going to get the value of the return url and the query is called return url and if there is no return url then what we want to do is use this or over here or operator and then specify if there is no url we want to redirect the user to the home page that is just this forward slash here which means it's going to redirect it 
to the home page direct the user to the home page if the user directly is accessing the login page and was not referred by some other url then the user after logging in will be referred to this page that's the home page that's the route for that now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and initialize our insert form object which is the form group object so let's do that Now to initialize our form group object, we will use our form builder inside the constructor. So let's use this object form builder and the form builder has a method that helps us to group all the values of our form control. So using the group method, we can group all the controls that we have inside our form control so now what we want to do is add two curly braces and here let's add all the controls the first control the key for the first control is username and the username is our username here so username comma the second control that we have is password we'll give it a key of password and then the value will be provided by the password object that should be it if you have more than one control or more than these two controls in your login form when you created the login form you can first initialize them and then you can add them to your form builder group so that should be it for the initialization of our objects. So our objects have been initialized and the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and create our onSubmit method. The onSubmit method is basically the method that will fire off when the submit button has been clicked on our login form. So let's go ahead and code our onSubmit method. Since we have already stretched this video for about 17 minutes and now I'm going to stop this video here and continue coding the on submit method in the next video tutorial. Please like and subscribe my channel Tech Howdy for more updates.